So let's dive into that config. Okay, so I'm going to open up PuTTY, and I'm going to connect to router 1. And right now, if I do show IP route, I still have my static route in here for 10 dot, for 192.168.10.0 slash 24. Let's remove that first. So we're going to remove that static route first because we'll no longer need it when we have our, our default gateway set. In addition, I've changed my network around so that now I'm connected out to the internet instead of connected to another network there. So 192.168.10.0 no longer exists. So I'll move into configuration mode. And I have a couple ways of eliminating that route. One, I can just type no and then IP route and then figure out what the rest of the command is. An easier way to do that is to type, use the do command here and type show run. Now remember the do command we use when we're in config mode and we want to run a privileged mode command like show run. We can use the do command to escape out of config mode for one command and then bring us back into config mode. So we'll type do show run, that'll show us what's currently configured. And what we're looking for is our static route. And here it is right here. So I'll highlight that. And I'm going to hit Control C and PuTTY, which will end looking at the config. And now I can type the word no. And with this route highlighted in my config, all I have to do is press the right click button on my mouse. And it automatically pastes whatever is selected. So right click in putty is paste so i select what i like and then right click and it pastes it notice that there is no menu that popped up all right there is no menu for right click in putty there is only paste okay so whatever is selected in putty when you right click it's going to paste it when i type no ip route here it takes that route out of my routing table now so now if I look at show IP route from privileged mode prompt, now my route is no longer in my routing table, the route to 192.168.10.0. Let's go back to config mode now and create our default route. The default route in our routing table is also called the gateway of last resort. All right, gateway and router, so router of last resort. It's the place we send traffic when we don't have another route to it. To do that, I still use the IP route command, except this time for the default route, I use an IP address, a network address of 0.0.0.0 with a mask of 0.0.0.0. And in the land of networking, this means everything. All right, 0000 with the mask of 0000 means everything that isn't already a route in the routing table. And my next hop address for this route is going to be the same one that I used when I was trying to connect to 192.168.10.0. And that is the IP address on router 2 that has an interface IP assigned to the same network that my router has an interface IP for. So, my router's Fast Ethernet 01 has an IP address on network 172.16.10.2, and router 2 also has an IP address on that same network, and they're connected together with that cable, so my next hop address is the same as it was before. Oh my gosh, didn't finish my command there. All right, no big deal, you press the up arrow and you continue on. Okay, so my next hop, 172.16.10.1. Perfect. Well, now, as we know from before, I now have to go onto router 2 and manually configure router 2 as well. So I, I have several options here now when I want to go configure router 2. I can close out of my putty session and reopen it, or I can just go over to my router and move the rollover cable from the console port of router 1 to the console port of router 2, which I've just done. Now when I press the enter key, my prompt changes, and now my prompt is at router 2 instead of at router 1. So now I can go configure router 2. Let's look at the routing table first. So I'll do show IP route. This time, 
I've already connected my device to the internet here on Fast Ethernet 0 slash 0. And that IP address I assigned is 203.0.113.65, which is on network 203.0.113.64 slash 28. If I can get that highlighted, just the slash 28. There we go. I also have directly connected to my device 172.16.10.0 slash 30. And last, I have this static route in here yet from my previous configuration for 10.0.1.0. Now the question is, do I need that route in there yet? The answer is yes, of course I do, because router 2 needs to know how to reach 10.0.1.0 if we want our internet connection to work. So I'm going to leave my route in there for 10.0.1.0 because without it, my traffic will not return back from the internet just like it did before when I had the 192.168.10.0 network. Perfect. We'll notice that my gateway of last resort now is not set, meaning my default gateway, my default route has not been set yet. So let's go into config T. We'll add IP route, this time for 0.0.0.0, with a mask of 0.0.0.0. This time my next hop is going to be the IP address that my ISP gave me, which is the IP address out in the cloud of the internet, which is 203.0.113.66. This next hop IP address to the internet is on a network that we know about. All right, so we are directly connected to this network that we are setting our next hop for our default route. Press enter. Let's go back a prompt. Now, we didn't take a look at this on router 1, so let's take a look at it on router 2. We'll do show IP route. So this time when I do show IP route, notice that gateway of last resort is 203.0.113.66 to network 0000, my default route. And then I also have my static route in my router, has a little star by it. We'll look up on what that is in a second. It says 0000, 000, 000 slash 0 via 203.0.113.66. If I look up what the star is, the star up on the top here usually means that it is the default route right here, candidate default. It means that this is a candidate for the default route. If we have more than one route that could be the default route, it goes through a process to select which one is the correct default route because we can only have a single default route on our router. You can only have one place where you send the traffic where you don't know where to send it to. Excellent. So I've configured the default route on router two. Let's go back and verify that that default route showed up properly in my configuration on router one. So I've moved my rollover cable from router 2 now back to router 1. I'm going to exit out of config mode on router 1 and do a show IP route. And here again, we also see that my gateway of last resort is set here. It shows my next top address, and it also shows it in my routing table below that. So my default gateway is set on both devices. Let's see now if I can ping the IP address of my router connected to the internet, and let's see if then we can ping an IP address on the internet. To do that, I'm going to open up command prompt. So first we'll do ping 203.0.113.66, which is the IP address of the internet that's in the cloud. And I'm getting reply, 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 reply. That's a good sign. Let's see if I can ping Google's DNS server, which is 8.8.8.8. .8 and I get a reply from Google's DNS server from 8888. This is outstanding. This means that I've now used the default route to set a path for all traffic where I don't know where else to send it to. What we've seen in this demonstration is two things. We've looked at how to configure static routes two types of static routes. One, a general static route that'll route us to an individual network. And two, we've seen a static route called the default route and how to configure that so that we can reach all other networks, which is the mechanism we use to get out to the internet. Thanks a lot for watching this video. I look forward to seeing you in future train signal videos.